So you always wear a bathrobe to any and everything? Wore a bathrobe to court. Did you have an attorney at the time? Which time? Oh, one time I did not, and one time I did. Okay, so explain. So I went in and... Because you got arrested. Well, one time I went just to pay a ticket, and I didn't think I had to go into court, but the ticket had been unpaid for years. So when I went to the desk to go pay the ticket, they said, you got to go up to 2B. And I said, I can't just pay the ticket. They said, no, you got to go see the judge. So I went up there. I had on, uh, I had my favorite robe on that day, and I had on some blue slippers. I really think the judge was hating because my robe was better than his, but neither here nor there. I was incarcerated and, and served some time. They put me on, uh, put me on probation and all of that. Over not paying a ticket? Yeah. Well, that was that one, that one incident. Well, let's just talk about that incident first. Mm -hmm. What kind of ticket was this that was unpaid? It was from 2014, and it was some driving shit. I don't remember. It was six years ago. And I went in there. It had been five years ago, and... You know, I had moved and I forgot about it. It wasn't even in the jurisdiction and I came to take care of it because, you know, I got to get reinstatements and all this stuff done and they was, they weren't having it. But that was that. I came in to pay the ticket. I didn't even think I was going to court that time. But I, the problem to them is that they might feel like I'm attempting to disrespect the court or, you know, What's the, they have a term for it in the court system. They call it a, when you don't, you don't perform the way they want you to perform. I forget the term. People in the comments will drop it, but, you know, the world can't stop my comfort, ultimately, is the moral of the story. I'm going to be comfortable no matter where I am. I mean, everybody in the cell was complaining about how cold they were. And I was the warmest nigga in there. I mean has its benefits. But at some point you'll have to dress up if you stay there long enough, I assume. Yeah, 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 I had to dress down and they did not have a robe for me. I was out sooner than later. So what county was this? This was in, I think it was Gwinnett. Okay. Yeah, it was Gwinnett. Gwinnett County. Yeah, the, ro the robe was better than the judges, I guess. Is Gwinnett County considered Atlanta, outside of Atlanta? Part of it's Atlanta? considered the outskirts. Okay. Yeah. So you get this. Is that typically what happens is, okay, if somebody gets a ticket, they don't pay for it. For years. Yeah, it was but if you don't, but, but But let's say you get a ticket, a citation. There's probably a date whether you have to pay for the ticket or see. Show to court, yeah. Or show to court. And I guess depending on what type of uh, infraction it is, because some infractions you can't just pay it online and that's it you have to actually see the judge. Right, right. So I don't know if this infraction originally consisted of just paying it online or seeing the judge. Right. But different offenses deem different things. Yeah, for sure. So is this one of those things where, okay, it has a deadline on the ticket, whether it's a paying online or seeing the judge. Again, I don't know your infraction. Do you know the, what it was originally? What I you had remember. to do? The, um, the date came and left, and it was I had moved and went through a series of different trials and tribulations in my life. And really, you know, the last thing on my mind was paying tickets of whatever nature they had on me. And in, in, in that case, I had about four warrants for my arrest for uh, various things that I did back, you know, years ago that I had to individually, once I got back on my feet and stopped being homeless, I had to take care of them individually, especially being that I I travel around and they see that I travel around. Wait, I'm confused. I thought this was just for one, this ticket was for like one violation. This was in one jurisdiction, yeah, but I had at that time four warrants for my arrest for different various things in different counties and jurisdictions and I had to individually go and manage and handle all of those. Wait, I'm confused. So prior to this ticket, you already had four warrants for your arrest? That was one of them. I was going to pay the ticket so that they would, they would take get rid of the um, warrant.
Okay, so that's what I was getting to. Normally, when you get a citation or a ticket, there's a deadline to yeah. either pay the fine online or see the judge, depending on what the infraction is. And once that deadline passes, if it's unpaid or you don't see the judge like you're supposed to, mm -hmm. then that's when they issue a, an arrest warrant, correct? Right. Yeah. So I got all of that squared away. But I did it my way, and um, I was very comfortable in the process, and that's what it's all about. I hope that the people watching this can take, take from that, that you don't have to do things the way people tell you you have to do them. Well, how long did you end up doing in jail? Collectively or? Well, just, no, just that, that instance there. Um, you show up. They didn't give me, they didn't give me a bail. So I had, I did a couple weeks because they, uh, they said that I was a flight risk. So then what ends up happening in that situation? You get an attorney involved? I thought at that point, I didn't have really the opportunity to do anything because I literally showed up in my robe and slippers and they told me I had to go to court. So I walked up there thinking I'm about to just hand them a check and uh, they handed me some cuffs. So you're in there, they consider you a flight risk. Mm -hmm. You're in there for a couple weeks, then what happens? Do you get an attorney at that point for the... They, they have a weird thing going on in there where you know, I was released in the system, but they were still holding me. So I did have to end up getting an attorney to get me out. They have things going on in that building and that jurisdiction that are very questionable. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to speak down on the judicial system uh, as I'm now free of it. So, so how did things ended up uh, getting cleared? Does the attorney just take care of everything? Is it fines? Is yeah, it if you pay him enough money, that's really what it came down to. It's because when all of these warrants came originally, you know, I was, you know, poor sleeping outside of the studio. I lost everything I had. When I made the, the transition into, you know, wearing robes religiously is, I lost all of my possessions and my belongings in a situation where I was stuck in California. I couldn't afford to fly back to Miami where I was staying at the time. And um, I was racing cars, I was doing all type of things. And ultimately, I don't know if anybody watching this has ever got a one-way flight for opportunity and then they got somewhere the opportunity wasn't what they thought it was. And basically I was stuck there. I mean, Cali is beautiful, don't get me wrong. I wasn't stuck there like miserable, but I was stuck there like, you know, I got an apartment on the other side of the country and they sending me eviction notices. And then one day I got a call from my neighbor, he's like, yo, Harv, where you at? Um, all, your, all your stuff outside, like your Gucci shoes and your, your, your belts and your bags and all that stuff is sitting out on the curb. I'm like, I'm just sitting in a Motel 6 in LA when I get this call, I'm just like, damn. And um, you know, after that, all I had was what I brought in my luggage and it motivated me even more to, you know, strive and pursue my dreams and show the world that anything is truly possible.